Hi guys, welcome to Fun Math. Let's do some revision for what we have learned in function. We will go through some of the past year questions in IGCSE exam. So guys, let's get ready with your pen and papers. You may pause this video at any time before the answers are given. Good luck! To answer the first part, you are actually asked to complete the square for this quadratic equation. So we take out the number 2 and it becomes 2 multiplied by x squared minus 4x plus 5. And finally, we get 2 multiplied by x minus 2 to the power of 2 minus 3. And hence, your a is equal to negative 2 and your b is negative 3. For part 2, you are asked to write a suitable domain for the function f so that the inverse function of f exists. We have known that for the inverse function to exist, the domain of the function f must be one-to-one -one function. As we can see from this graph, for it to become one-to-one -one function, the domain for x is when x is greater or equals to 2 or x is lesser and equals to 2. From the given domain, when x is greater or equals to 0, it is the minimum point for the function of g of x. Hence, we substitute 0 into the function and we get 4. So, the range for the function of g is greater or equals to 4. We already know that the domain of the function h is equal to the range of the inverse function of h and hence the range for the inverse function of h is greater or equal to 0. First, we draw the graph for y equals to g of x, then reflect the graph along the line y equals to x and you get the graph y equals to the inverse function of g of x. Remember to plot the intercepts on the coordinate axis. What we have here, g of h of x equals to 85. We substitute the function h into function g. Then we expand the equation and we get 16x squared minus 200x plus 544 equals to 0. You can use this formula to get the roots for this quadratic equation. From here, we get x equals to 17 over 2 and x equals to 4. But we only take the answer x equals to 17 over 2 because when we substitute 4 into the function h, we get negative 9 which is not in the domain of the function g. To find the range for function f, as it is a quadratic equation, we have to find the minimum point, which is 0, negative 1. At the same time, find the image of the maximum and minimum value from the given domain. Therefore, the range for the function f is greater or equals to negative 1, but lesser or equals to 299. For second part, just follow the same principle as we mentioned earlier. For inverse function of f to exist, the domain for the function f must be a one-to-one -one function. So, the domain is x is greater or equals to 0 or x is lesser or equals to 0.
v let inverse function of g of x equals to y and g of y equals to x for e to the power of y minus 2 equals to x and you get y equals to natural log of x plus 2 divided by 4 and hence your inverse function of g of x is natural log of x plus 2 divided by 4 what we have here g of h of x is equals to 18 and therefore inverse function of g of 18 equals to h of x we substitute 18 into the equation of the inverse function of g of x then you get natural log of 18 plus 2 divided by 4 is equals to natural log of 5x and hence we get x equals to 1 To get the answer, you can sketch the graph for f of x equals to the natural log of 5x minus 10, which look like this. Note that it has an asymptote at x equals to 2, so the range for the function of f is a set of all real numbers. For part 2, the inverse function of f of x is equals to e to the power of x plus 10 divided by 5. For part 3, the range for the inverse function is equal to the domain for the function and hence the range for the inverse function of f is more than 2. For part 4, f of x equals to 0, natural log of 5x minus 10 equals to 0 and we get 5x minus 10 equals to e to the power of 0 which is 1. Finally, we have x equals to 2.2. What we have here g of f of x is equal to f of x squared. Expand the equation and we get this. Then by using the rules of logarithm, we get natural log of 5x minus 10 to the power of 2 is equal to natural log of 10x squared minus 20. Take away the natural log and we get this quadratic equation 3x squared minus 20x plus 24 equals to 0. Then get the roots and we only take x is equal to 5.097. The function of g is a reciprocal function. To find the range of g, we have to substitute the minimum and the maximum value from the given domain into the function g and hence the range of g of x is greater or equals to 1 over 5 but lesser or equals to 1. When f and g are increasing at the same rate, it means f prime of x is equal to g prime of x. By using differentiation, we get the derivative for both functions. 6x squared equals to 4 minus 10x. Hence, we get x equals to 1 over 3 or x equals to negative 2.
For these questions, you have to draw two graphs, one modulus graph and one linear graph. If you would like to refresh on how to draw a modulus graph, please refer to my previous video. Note that there are two intersection points between these two graphs. Therefore, you should get two solutions for X. To find the range for the function f, you can sketch the graph for 6 plus e to the power of 4x. As it is an exponential graph, it looks like this. There is an asymptote at y equals to 6. So the range for f of x is greater than 6. This is how we get the inverse function of f, which is 1 over 4 natural log of x minus 6. The domain for the inverse function is x greater than 6, and the range for the inverse functions is the set of all real numbers. To find f prime, which is the first derivative for function f, you just have to differentiate the function f, and you get 4e to the power of 4x. When f of x is equals to f prime of x, you just substitute both equations and you get 6 plus e to the power of 4x equals to 4e to the power of 4x. Solve the equation and finally you get x equals to 1 over 4 natural log of 2. This is how the graph of this function looks like. We will talk about basic graph sketching and transformation in my next video. So stay tuned. In this function, in order to find the range of function f, you just need to substitute the minimum and maximum value of the given domain into the function. So the range for function f is greater than 2 minus square root 5, but lesser or equal to 2. This is how you find the inverse function of f. When the composite function f of g of x equals to 0, substitute the function g of x equals to 4 over x into the function f. Solve the equation and you get x equals to negative 4. The function g is a quadratic equation with the minimum point intersect at the y-axis. So to get the minimum point, we substitute x equals to 0 into the function and we get 1. So the range for the function g is greater or equals to 1. To answer this question, first, you need to find the inverse function of f, which is 1 over 3 natural log of x. Then, you need to find the g of square root of 62, which is 125. Next, you substitute 125 into the inverse function of f, and you will get the final answer natural log of 5. To answer these questions, you have to get the derivative for both functions. If you differentiate the function f, you will get the first derivative. To get the second derivative, you have to differentiate the function g for twice. So for the first derivative of f equals to 6 multiply the second derivative of g, you will get 3e to the power of 3x equals to 6 multiplied by 4, e to the power of 3x equals to 24, and x equals to 1 over 3 natural log of 8, which is equals to natural log of 2. 
these are the graph for the function g and the inverse function of g. To find the least value of c, we have to let 2x minus 7 greater or equals to 0 because this is a square root function and so the x is greater or equals to 7 over 2. Hence, the least value of c is 7 over 2. This is how you get the inverse function of function h. For the equation k of x equals to x, you will finally get the quadratic equation x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals to 0. Factorize the equation and you only take x equals to 4. Remember the domain for k of x is greater than 2. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting contents. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!